Hi film guys and girls and welcome to another episode of Monday Minutes. This time it's all about complex characters and it's about Breaking Bad and the complex character of Walter White. So this is some kind of a mini video essay, analysis of my favorite series Breaking Bad. I've watched it like eight times and by talking about Walter White I will tell you more how to build complex characters. And if you like this episode please click subscribe or comment if you want to know more about Walter White or other characters let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, there's also a short poll at the end. I'd be honored to talk about your theme in the next week. So, anyway, here we go, have fun. By the way, there are some mild spoilers ahead. Okay, so what do you need for a great character to be complex? You need a rainbow of emotions. So every layer should be like a color, in my opinion. And what layers do you need? You need three things. You need to build inner conflict, make unexpected choices, let your characters struggle and grow. So, how to build inner conflicts? You have to give your character an important decision to make. Um, the harder it is to, you know, to find a solution, the more you will struggle. And this uh, human struggle of, you know, coming to grips with life or this decision makes us uniquely human and makes the audience connect with this character. For example, Walter White, who struggles to support his fucking family and um, decides to cook meth and use his skill as an extremely talented chemistry teacher or chemist to support his family. And um, he puts so much at stake. It's a universe of choices and we can see this right from the start. What is affected in his you know, normal life, in his family life, in his business life. All these choices create a psychological death. The next one is have your characters make unexpected choices. For example, um, if you look at Walter, by the end of the third or the second season, he hits those two drug dealers and runs them over with a car. And you really think, what the fuck just happened? Why did he do this? The whole season led up to this point. This is the character arc they wanted to tell in this season. It is really unexpected. You don't expect this choice, but this choice also needs to be true to character. Walter is becoming more and more aggressive and competitive, so the obvious choice is to kill his competitors and also to save Jesse. This is really good writing. The next one is let your character struggle and grow. I think it's pretty obvious this, that Walter struggles. In the first pictures after the teaser, you can see that um, He's struggling with uh, the pregnancy of his wife and not being able to just buy a hot water boiler. Um, so, um, yeah, he struggles a lot. And um, also he grows a lot because if you see this teaser, you know, with this man standing in the desert, his pants flying away and he's standing in the desert aiming to shoot the police who's coming to get him. And then we have this cut and we go back to his normal life, like couple of weeks earlier and it's really like wow what did this you know loser dicked around by his boss and by his wife what did he do to change this is uh, really intriguing bonus tip is do this very early don't spare the good stuff for later why not you know jump in with both feet like uh, Breaking Bad did next one is obsessed characters Walter is an obsessed character he really needs to succeed in his business he makes so much money in the end that he isn't able to count it his wife weighs it sprays it with anti buck stuff just to <laughs> to keep it safe and um, it's pretty strange he is obsessed with earning money you also need three things for obsessed characters because Walter is clearly an obsessed character he's obsessed with earning money, with supporting his family. Even if he has enough money, he's still obsessed about cooking meth and being the best in this business thing. We're going to talk about the scar later on. Anyway, you should start off strong. You should be willing to show the, uh, the energy that goes into this obsessed character and you should show this descent into madness. So start off strong. We see this teaser, we see this guy, you know, in the desert um, without pants. Two dead bodies in his bag, a lot of chemical equipment, so he must be some kind of drug manufacturer. This family guy who, you know, records a message for his uh, wife and, and son and unborn daughter, and then he goes, steps on the desert road and uh, threatens to kill the police officers with a gun. So um, this is a pretty much greatest start ever. Um, this is a strong start, it teases so much, but we also see the energy, what Walter is willing to do 
to support his family and to make money and to be the best at something, to succeed, to use his skills. We can see him crackling with energy in this first teaser. Oh, and by the way, we can also see this uh, slight descent into madness, you know, when he shaves his head and, you know, kills Tuco and, um, you know, just is just willing to shoot the police officers when they're coming to get him in this in this short teaser in the, in the pilot. So this is really a strong and and uh, descent into madness. Vince Gilligan, the creator, had the idea of Mr. Chips um, turning Scarface. I mean, we know Scarface is a famous drug dealer, um, drug lord, Tony Montana, played by Al Pacino. He's the, the face of evil. And Mr. Chips is just a nice teacher. So he wants this character of what a white going from Mr. Chips to Scarface. And so we need to start off strong, getting a taste of how evil will he be. The next one is a flawed hero. Walter is not also obsessed. He is also a flawed hero. So he is haunted by the past, has a wound, and is untested and untried. He is haunted by his past, the scar I talked about. Um, he left Grey Matter, a company founded with um, a colleague in uh, when he was studying. His scar seems to be that um, he left Grey Matter and sold the, his company share for a couple of bucks and now it's worth millions and never a single week passes by he tells Jesse later on where he doesn't check. So this is clearly his scar, um, his wound um, that never heals. He always wants to have his own business to succeed and to be the best and to make millions and billions even if he you know really can't spend his money because as Skylar put it, with all the car shops in the world, like five, six, ten or, not, or, or, or more, you can't really launder all the money. So this past haunts him. Also, um, his uh, Nobel um, team um, picture on the wall also teases that he was meant or he was meant to, to do more, to be a great scientist and then he just works at a school and can't even support his family. So this is also his past. He can't really use his skills. He's untested. He's untried. He wakes for his call to be, quote, awake. You know, when he tells Jesse to buy the Awee, he says, um, I'm why do you do this? And he said, I'm awake. So he wakes for a wake-up call to use the skills to become the best in someone and to succeed in this business called math cooking. Also, this past allows him to change. He does everything to be better, to, to escape his past. This challenge of being untested should be difficult, should be really hard to achieve something new, should really test him and try him. Um, the harder, the better. The last thing I want to talk about is the suffering of the character. So, um, the more your character suffers, the better. So, what has to do with suffering are also three things. Hard choices, a theme and reckoning. Hard choices, again, um, make it difficult for your character to achieve something. Make it really hard for him or her to achieve something. And the harder the choice, better. It's like life. Nothing is easy. You should work for this and should not come easy. The next one is theme. You should uh, pick a theme that's easily recognizable and should appear to um, a lot of people. Like something classic like love or you know hate or betrayal or something else. Something that will be relevant in a couple of decades or maybe hundreds of years, like Shakespeare. The other thing is, is reckoning. So it should also be some kind of um, you know, punishment for what he or she does. So there should also be some kind of, uh, you know, um, retribution or some kind that makes it, you know, because Walter will lose his family in the end. This is the reckoning. Because if your characters are complex, your good characters will have made some bad decisions and the bad characters will have made some good decisions. So this is also the complexity of the characters. Don't make it too one-dimensional. Also have them cast some kind of have some kind of punishment there. The actions should be punished in a good way or a bad way. Some, some, sometimes they can also be rewarded. By the way, a quick bonus tip is foreshadowing. You should always use your first 10 pages to foreshadow conflict, foreshadow stuff to come and not be, not be too much on the nose. Try to avoid big exposition points. Um, have your characters say it by using actions and not words. So that's been it for today. Thank you very much for watching. There's a poll at the end. Please take it and let me know 
which teams you would like to talk about and um, hear about in the next and upcoming weeks. So that's been it for today. Thank you very much for watching and um, see you guys next week. <laughs> Goodbye.